All right. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, we have a good one for you today. Uh, today we have uh, Yuru Lin. Yuru is an associate professor at the University of Pittsburgh, where she directs the Pitt Computational Social Dynamics Lab and serves as the research director of the Institute for Cyber Law, Policy, and Security. Uh, her research focuses on computational social science, data mining, and visualization, uh, specifically using social network and text data to analyze societal events, behaviors, and dynamics. Uh, she's published, published extensively, contributed to prestigious conferences, and serves in editorial roles for several scientific journals, highlighting her significant influence in the field of computational social science. Uh, Yuru has asked that we hold our questions to the end, and we will. But if you have a question at any time, uh, just drop it in the chat, and I'll read it when we get to the Q&A. Uh, thanks, Yuru. Uh, the floor is yours. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. And thank you, Frey, uh, for the warm introduction. And thank you, uh, Frey and Joy, uh, for inviting me here. Uh, it was a great pleasure to be here. And sorry, I couldn't make it in person. Uh, I would love to visit uh, ISI uh, sometime soon. Uh, it would be a great uh, a great pleasure to meet old friends and new friends in person. And lots of our research has been uh, inspired by folks at ISI, including especially Fred and Christina. So uh, today I'm excited to share uh, our research on this topic, um, a gateway. Uh, a gateway to trustworthy AI using uh, visual analytics to unmask uh, coincidental uh, correlations. So typically my talk are about computational social science uh, with a focus on uh, social phenomena uh, in cyberspace. But now uh, with AI's capacity, uh, more data scientists and computational social science researchers capitalized on AI and claimed uh, it helps uh, understand human behaviors better. So as the AI algorithm starts to feature as a measurement tool uh, used to analyze uh, human decision-making and behaviors, uh, knowing how much we can trust these sophisticated tools has become uh, more crucial than ever. So uh, today uh, I'm excited to share our research along this line and uh, look forward to hearing your thoughts. So uh, a few words about myself. I'm a computational social science, uh, scientist by training and later I become a, a, a sorry, I'm a computer science scientist by training and later I become a computational social scientist um, in computational uh, social science. The goal is not to study the computational systems or optimize uh, computational efficiency. So instead we ask, how do we get a valid, uh, reliable and scalable computational measurements about people's thinking and the behaviors and understand the complex social systems where the thinking and behaviors are situated. So this is why uh, understanding and designing better measurement tools is crucial in comp computational social science. So uh, my research is mainly about uh, designing data-driven analytical approaches uh, to study human social and political behaviors as part of the social information ecosystems. And broadly, uh, I'm concerned about uh, how information is exacerbated and disseminated through the social technical systems and how the uh, information, um, uh, how such information um, exacerbates the polarization and biases in the social fabrics. So uh, the works uh, from my group covers two main areas. Uh, one is uh, cyber social influences and the information integrity issues, such as uh, how uh, misinformation, disinformation, uh, conspiracy theories, and hate spray in uh, cyberspace. So for example, we show how uh, online narratives may be traced to offline flyers uh, and the banners that have been displayed by uh, far-right hate groups in the US. And uh, another 
uh, is ethical and accountable AI. So we want to understand how to develop uh, techniques that can be conscientious about the biases that, that emerge in data science practice. So for example, uh, personalized content filtering may reinforce uh, stereotypical or ideological preferences and further uh, exacerbate uh, ideological uh, polarization. So uh, recently we demonstrate how the content recommendation algorithms can amplify the stereotypical user profiling, especially for women and uh, senior users. And so uh, instead of being manipulated by AI, how can we leverage data and AI to mitigate uh, such uh, system-induced biases and stereotypes? So now um, that uh, you know a bit about me, so let's dive uh, into today's topic. So I want to uh, start with how uh, artificial intelligence makes artificial correlations. This is that kind of correlation that is not based on a true relationship between the variables, but rather is created or induced by AI and uh, data tools. So uh, I used to think about uh, today's phenomena through a historic lens. But before we look at AI's progress, let's take it back uh, even further to uh, 30 years ago. So in 1990, uh, three decades ago, when uh, Bill Gates uh, introduced this uh, giant vision, uh, information at your fingertip. At that time, it's hard for many people to portray the world that full of information. So he elaborate uh, on this vision. Now, my name for this vision is information at your fingertips. When I say information here, I mean it in a very broad sense. I mean all the information that somebody might be interested in, including information they can't even get today. When somebody comes in to do their job, they ought to sit down at their PC and see the information that's important to them. If they want more detail, they ought to just point and click, and that detail should come up on the screen for so uh, the vision is something that looks like, like this. So imagine that you will have all kinds of information come to your fingertips, allowing you to make decision more easily. But unfortunately, uh, the picture is not accurate. The real picture is that you are likely to have all kinds of information come unorganized, waiting for you to decide which is more important uh, than others. So uh, information is great until it's too much. So now after 30 years, we have another version uh, of this picture. So while you will have all kinds of information come unorganized, uh, AI plus big data can help you organize, learn and get what you need and help make decisions instantly and you can uh, just chat with the, the AI. So today's uh, journalist coined this vision, uh, insight at your fingertip. So thanks to AI's capacity to turn data into information and uh, information into insight. So everyone is talking about AI, to name a few uh, in the healthcare domain. AI in the uh, healthcare market size uh, had a staggering uh, growth uh, just from uh, 2022 to 2023. The market size uh, raised from 8 billion to 20, uh, 22 billion. Um, AI uh, and machine learning algorithms were utilized to diagnose uh, COVID-19 positive patients uh, rapidly and accurately and to predict tumors and cancers. So uh, do we get a better diagnosis uh, with AI? So uh, one research team uh, found that AI is good to predict patients in one, hospi one hospital, uh, but not the other. Um, why? 
So they try to seek, uh, try to see how AI uh, learn to diagnose. So they use uh, saliency map, and uh, again, uh, that is the generative adversarial uh, network. They use these models. These are two very popular uh, interpretable machine learning technique to see what AI learn. So they found um, AI is good at picking useful signals for predictions, uh, but not always as we desired. The AI uh, was picking uh, salient features with text around the corners, uh, simply uh, because in one particular hospital, the CT images for testing negatives printed a spatial kind of text around the image corners. And it also uh, picked the feature outside the long area, uh, which are completely unrelated to COVID. Uh, similar uh, funny, uh, funny signals uh, show up in the GAN model, um, where the model think that having uh, a letter R at the corner is important for uh, COVID negative uh, diagnosis. So this study show uh, how AI models may learn a bunch of shortcuts uh, to optimize the predictions rather than uh, meaningful diagnose uh, signals. So uh, let's uh, look at another domain. So in marketing or more generally, um, AI can now automatically generate a uh, report and uh, tell you uh, which business or policy strategies are more effective. So for example, uh, this AI company offers a graphical digest that tells you which advertisement is better. So uh, based on this auto digest, an online marketing uh, analyst can quickly tell uh, which advertisement are more effective. So uh, for the sake of illustration, let's assume we have two ads. We can see uh, the revenue uh, per ad spend and uh, conclude that ad A yields a higher return. However, uh, the digest can be misleading. The association between the ads and the returns may not be uh, useful. If the analyst ever consider breaking down the customers, they will discover that ad A works poorly in attracting new customers because fewer new customers click at, at A, where at B uh, works particularly well for new customers. So the winner uh, should be at B. So, okay, uh, because of marketing, tend to strive to attract new customers. So looking at the, the new customers may be no brainers. So it's unlikely to make such a simple mistake, right? But what about something not originally considered as the objective? So for example, assuming we are only focusing on the new customers, but now assuming you are actually checking two job ads. So unless, unless you uh, break down uh, the applicants by gender, you may not realize that one ad works especially poorly in attracting uh, female apl applicants. And if you ignore uh, this fact, the recruiting process can be biased, discriminated, discriminatory and have harmful uh, consequences. <clears throat> so uh, both uh, picking show card over real signals and uh, overlooking the hidden or uh, hidden factors or groups, both of these can lead to artificial correlations. So today I'm going to introduce our research in tackling AI's artificial correlations, uh, also known as 
uh, coincidental or spurious associations. So how can we make uh, the machines and ourselves to be conscientious about coincidental or spurious associations? So I'm going to uh, talk two works as example. The first work is countering AI's uh, blind spots. So uh, this work is published in Kai. All right, so let's consider the most popular and typical use of AI, the classification task. So this has a wide range of application, including object detection, user profiling, and the use of image classification for uh, medical diagnosis. So no matter how well the classification performs, uh, machines can still make errors. And what are the most uh, concerning errors? Mm -hmm. The most concerning is the systematic uh, errors. So it occurs when the system misclassify a group of instances that share similar error patterns, which means the systems repeat the error over and over. For example, uh, cats with grace uh, repeatedly misclassify as dogs, and women wearing hats repeatedly uh, misclassify as men. So the system is not aware of such errors and doesn't know the errors occur over and over. These are called uh, the machine's uh, blind spots. For example, when the model only see uh, black dogs in the training set, but not black cats, the model learns the association and then uh, cats with blackness tend to be misclassified as dogs. Or when the grass uh, always appear together with dogs, the model learns the association and cats with grass tend to be misclassified as dogs. So not only that the model uh, fails uh, to recognize cat image, but the model fails with high confidence. So the machine does not even know that it will make such errors. So machines confident errors leads to blind spots. These are the ma major source for systematic errors, also called unknown, unknowns. So in principle, uh, we can break down errors due to uh, different kinds of uncertainties. So there are ma uh, two major types of uncertainty. The first is aleatoric uh, uncertainty. So this is the uncertainty from uh, the inherent uh, randomness or variability in the system. Uh, it stems from noise or class overlap uh, uh, in the data. And it's irreducible. Uh, it cannot be eliminated through additional knowledge or information. So another major type of uncertainty is the epistemic uncertainty. So the word uh, epistemic is related to our knowledge about something. So uh, epistemic uncertainty means a lack of knowledge uh, about a system. And the system could be uh, a real system or a model system. So for example, uh, we may have an inadequate uh, understanding of the underlying process, or we have uh, incomplete knowledge of the phenomena. And this is uh, reducible uh, as long as we have more knowledge uh, about the data. So if we know uh, about uh, what we don't know, uh, we can get more information about that. So for example, uh, suppose we wish to uh, detect uh, two classes of objects. And based on the uh, training data, uh, our model uh, learns the feature distribution. And because the uh, unavoidable overlapping between the two classes, the model is unable to make accurate a prediction in this area. 
So this is called aleatoric uncertainty, and this is irreducible. However, uh, the model only has limited knowledge about the feature distribution. When new instances fall outside the model's knowledge, these are unknown uh, by the model. So this is epistemic uncertainty, and they are reducible, but very difficult. So <clears throat> understanding uh, what a model doesn't know is critical in AI system. So uh, these are uh, challenging because it's very hard to uh, identify the systematic errors that share similar uh, error patterns. And it's hard to capture blind spots that lead to these systematic errors. And moreover, uh, it's even harder to validate and mitigate uh, systematic errors. So our goal uh, in this uh, work is to help the data scientists, analysts, and practitioners to counter uh, systematic errors. And uh, the existing automatic techniques, uh, they tend to, um, uh, they typically focus on uh, model selection, uh, not the data inspection. So they tend to uh, suffer from low precision in detecting systematic error. On the other hand, uh, human often can do better in capturing the meaningful uh, misclassification patterns. And they can do uh, even better uh, with machine support. Uh, however, this often uh, overlook in machine learning literature or automatic technique. So in our approach, uh, we create a human in the loop uh, workflow uh, to leverage human capacity uh, to discover meaningful error patterns. And uh, we develop an uh, interactive systems and the visualization called ESCAPE. Uh, this stands for Countering Errors from Spirit's Concept Association via Interactive Inspection. So uh, the main contribution of this work includes uh, workflow, uh, statistical methods, and system with interactive uh, visualization. So, uh, um, this human-centric workflow uh, has four stages. So starting from diagnosis. So users can diagnose the misclassification and locate the systematic errors. And uh, identification. Users can identify the cause of uh, systematic errors by using the contrastive uh, analysis view. And this allows them to visually contrast these errors between classes and make initial hypotheses about why the errors may happen. Now, uh, validation. Users can validate the hypothesis uh, by using the concept association plot. And this allows them to check whether uh, the system is learning uh, bias patterns and whether they are spurious or undesirable uh, associations between the class and the salient uh, patterns. And then finally, uh, mitigation. So after identifying the spurious associations, user can decide how to mitigate the errors using uh, the bias plot. So let me walk you through uh, with a brief demo. So uh, the diagnose uh, phase helps answer the question, what are the machine's uh, blind spots? So the system uh, shows the degree of unknown unknowns among mis misclassifications. And these are the instances where the model fell uh, with high confidence. They are predicted with high probability, but wrong. And the degree of unknown unknowns are linked to the confusion matrix where users can see, in this case, uh, they are more unknown unknown in the cats, misclassified as dogs. And in the lower dimensional plot, uh, um, 
uh, of these samples, users can locate images uh, likely to be unknown unknowns. And now uh, the identification phase, it helps users to hypothesize the reasons for the machine's uh, blind spots. So the system allows users to browse unknown unknowns and recognize the patterns. For example, cat, cat images with person or dog image with a cage. And if there are uh, suspicious patterns, users can send them uh, can, can send this set of image to the contrasted analysis view, which helps focus on uh, contrasting uh, uh, the images among uh, uh, different uh, classes. So for example, here uh, we can see the pattern uh, grace uh, seems to cause the cats misclassified with dogs. So the users can now create and name the uh, possible concept for the patterns to be validated later. So this step uh, can be done uh, by the users uh, manually or automatically by the system using uh, visual clustering or visual segmentations. And users can now adjust the clustering uh, iteratively. And we design uh, the system uh, so that it can identify uh, human interpretable patterns. So the idea is that these uh, interpretable patterns uh, or the recognizable concepts, they can be traced back to a uh, modeling uh, training phase. So for example, uh, similar images or segments uh, may have closed in internal representations in uh, uh, deeper neural networks. And so we identify so-called concept vector. Uh, these are centroid for the internal representation of the group of images or segments. And then we can measure the bias through the association between the concept and an instance, and these are calculated as the angle between the concept and the instance vector. And this will tell us whether a particular concept might appear in an image. So now uh, the validation phase answers two questions. How is the concept biasly associated with a class? And how is the concept influential among uh, misclassification instances? So uh, we show the information in a concept association plot uh, where the association is shown on the X axis. This is the bias toward a class. So from left to right, uh, you see how concepts are biased to cat and to dog. And the uh, attribution is shown on the y-axis. This is the influence to misclassifications in a particular uh, class. So from top to down, uh, you see how concepts are influential to misclassify cats and to misclassify dogs. So, uh, what concepts are influential to misclassification? So using this uh, concept association plot, users can find this uh, blackness is most biased toward cats and influential to small set of misclassified dog images. Grass uh, is most uh, biased toward dogs and influential to a large set of misclassified cat images. And the user can click any of the concept. Uh, and then they can see uh, what did the model learn and how did the model fail through uh, showing these most representative images. So uh, in the last phase, the mitigation, we provide users with this de-bias uh, capability to mitigate AI's blind spots. So this is done by uh, removing uh, images that contribute 
the most to the spuriously associated concept from the training set. So we can look at the images that are most exclusively aligned with the concept. And the device plot can help users to determine how many concept related images should be removed in the training or should be added to the training in order to mitigate the spurious associations. So how do we mitigate uh, the unknown unknowns? So assume now, assuming now that users have observed the uh, spurious association, for example, Grace is most biased toward uh, dogs and it's influential to a large set of misclassified uh, cat images. So for this, user cannot see the percentage of bias removed when removing a number of instances having the concept grace. Um, and the first few uh, instances may give the uh, significant uh, percentage bias removal. But at some point, uh, the further removal may uh, may not provide significant gains. So these plots will help users to determine the amount of images to be removed. Okay, and there are several statistical uh, methods behind the system, including the metrics for uh, measuring the biased association and metrics for uh, uh, measuring the influence to uh, misclassification and uh, metrics for this uh, bias removal. So uh, we can uh, uh, talk in more details offline if you are interested. Um, and uh, so we evaluate uh, this approach in three different ways. Eva we evaluate the effectiveness of our statistical methods. We show uh, using escape in more uh, complex machine learning tasks. And we did a control user study to test the effectiveness and the uh, utility of uh, escape. So this is just to highlight that our, our statistical metrics for measuring uh, bias association outperforms the alternative uh, and baseline methods. And we show how the tools for measuring uh, bias removal improve uh, predictive performance with uh, the detected unknown unknown cases. So uh, in the more uh, complex uh, object detection tests where there are more than 20 uh, different classes, um, this uh, system helps the data scientists identify uh, blind spots. Uh, for example, between uh, detecting birds and airplanes. We found that uh, sky, clouds, and uh, 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 red and blue stripes and uh, stray patterns, these are biased toward uh, airplanes. And uh, uh, birds uh, tend to misclassify uh, as plants when they have these patterns. So uh, escape can identify and address uh, blind spots in the, these multi-class classifications. Uh, in another uh, task in a human face uh, detection uh, uh, data set uh, with additional 40 annotation attributes. So we do a uh, gender prediction and uh, our system helps show uh, blind spots. For example, women tend to misclassify uh, as men uh, when wearing uh, eyeglasses, when they are not uh, smiling, and when wearing hats. So uh, we see that the system effectively identify the model's systematic errors uh, with five concepts. Uh, smiling, eyeglasses, wearing hat, not, uh, and the most uh, stereotyped uh, concept is this uh, blonde uh, hair. And uh, our control user study showed that uh, among users with 
uh, escape and uh, with uh, baseline tools, uh, users with escape uh, perform uh, better in all kinds of uh, tasks and show better ability to detect AI's uh, blind spots. And these uh, subjective ratings uh, are interesting uh, because um, at the end of the day, uh, users need to be willing uh, to collaborate uh, with machine. So uh, we found that participants uh, found escape uh, to be more usable interactive uh, than baseline methods and uh, not more difficult uh, to use. All right, so uh, to summarize, uh, this work deals with AI's blind spots and we study uh, how uh, human, human AI collaboration can better identify and uh, mitigate the systematic errors. So escape uh, uh, is a visual analysis tool uh, for countering errors stem from Spurious Association. And uh, our evaluation uh, shows an increased human capacity uh, to deal and mitigate with machines uh, blind spots. So uh, that is the uh, first work. So we talk about, in the first work, um, we talk about uh, machines blind spots. How about humans blind spots uh, in the data-driven uh, decision-making? So in the following work, uh, we deal with the problem of identifying and interpreting this uh, paradoxical association in uh, data-driven decision process. All right, so um, many of you uh, may already hear about this notorious uh, Simpsons paradox, uh, also known as the Spurious uh, Association. So it's a, statistical phenomena uh, where a trend or relationship that appear when the data is aggregate can uh, reverse or disappear when the data uh, is split into subgroups. So when Simpson's paradox occurs, the overall patterns uh, can be incorrect, deceived, or lead to uh, incorrect uh, conclusions. Uh, for example, suppose a policy or decision maker want to know does a job training program help people increase their uh, salary? So the observational data shows that the relationship between participating in the job training program and people's salary is negative. So the decision maker may think, should I terminate the program since it's not helping? However, uh, later someone found that if you look at the black and non-black people separately, we found that participating in the training has positive relationship with increased salary for both groups. And the reason for the overall trend is possibly that black people are more likely to participate in training and they tend to have lower uh, income. So ethnicity uh, seems to, be, uh, to bring the confounding uh, effect. So now here's the problem. When I observe an association between the cause and the outcome, how do I know if there's a confounding effect? So in this case, uh, we want to learn how the training leads to a salary increase. And the ethnicity is the confounding variable that influence both cause and the outcome. So how can we identify confounding variable leading to such heterogeneity? And how can we understand and explain the association clearly? And how can we make an informed decision given that association might be distorted, reversed, 
and uh, counterintuitive. So our goal uh, in this work is to help practitioners handle spurious association in observation of the data. And the existing works uh, mostly impose strong data generation uh, assumptions and uh, provide a black box causal uh, computation. And it often requires the uh, data uh, practitioners to have a strong uh, causal knowledge and expertise. So in our work, we introduce a human-centric, uh, the paradox workflow that emphasize the interpretability. And we develop an uh, interactive systems and visualization called BISPER. Uh, these are uh, stands for visualizing spurious association for non-experts of uh, causal inference. And we aim to close the gap between uh, causal theory and practical use. So in this work, we do not want to simply provide a black box solution. So our goal is to engage people who do not have the strong theoretical or mathematical background, uh, the background in uh, causal inferences, and help them to become more conscientious about uh, this paradoxical association and then how to make sense of the paradoxical relationship in an intuitive way. So uh, let me show uh, how this work. So suppose we want to know, uh, does the training program help people to make more money? And we want to see if Simpson's paradox exists. So the system provides a the paradox workflow. Uh, first, a, confounding, a confounder uh, dashboard uh, can identify variables that are confounders to distort the cause outcome relationship. And then the subgroup viewers help to see whether a cause outcome trend can be generalizable to subgroup. And then the reasoning storyboard shows why the trend are paradoxical. And finally, the decision diagnosis, they allows users to see whether uh, there are any alternative explanation for the cause outcome trend. So let's see how the system uh, looks like. So the confounder dashboard uh, helps answer uh, which are confounders that distort the cause and outcome relationship. So users can first select the treatment and outcome variables. And these are the minimal informa information the system needs to know. And then the system can rank uh, the remaining variables by these confounding scores. So the scores quantify how treatment outcome uh, would change with and without controlling each of the covariates. And also user can now compare the treated and untreated distribution for each of the variables to understand which might be the confounding uh, uh, variables. And then the subgroup of viewers helps answer, uh, does the cause outcome trend general, generalizable uh, to subgroups? And how do subgroups differ from each other? So the users can manually create subgroups using their own knowledge or the system can help automatically create subgroups using clustering algorithms. So in this case, the covariate uh, space view uh, will show these two groups have very different characteristics. And the causality uh, space view, uh, the one in the bottom, contrasts subgroups through this cause and outcome uh, breakdown. And it shows the treatment outcome relationship in subgroups is very different from the aggregate, which is shown in this uh, gray line. So users can compare the overall cause and outcome trend 
versus the subgroups uh, cause and outcome trend by comparing the outcome of untreated and treated. And the breakdown works both uh, for both uh, uh, binary treatment and the continuous treatment variables. The reasoning uh, storyboard helps answer why are trends uh, paradoxical? So we provide intuitive paradox reasoning using uh, this uh, flow metaphor, which visually convey the cause is followed by the effect. So now if we see a cause and outcome uh, across all groups has these crossing patterns, uh, these crossing uh, paths, there must be some subgroup show as heal. And this means that cause leads to a negative outcome. And there must be some subgroup show as valid, uh, meaning that uh, the cause lead to a positive outcome. So these flow patterns can tell uh, whether there's a paradox. And if so, it's because of a mixture of negative and positive effects from different subgroups. And finally, the decision diagnosis, it answers is the uh, treatment uh, effective for the group? Are there any other alternative explanation? So users can now uh, take a close look at the, any subgroups and uh, they can check the imbalance scores. Uh, when imbalance score is high, meaning there's a heterogeneous association within a variable in the subgroup. And this will recommend users to further break down uh, the variable to check whether uh, there's a nested paradoxical uh, association. So, uh, in this system, uh, there are three key statistical methods uh, behind uh, the tools, including uh, the method for measuring confounding biases, uh, for measuring covariance, imbalance, and uh, for automatic uh, subgroup uh, discovery. So again, ask me if you are interested in knowing more. <clears throat> All right. So we demonstrate how a uh, visitor uh, can help uh, in real world uh, scenario. So in this case, uh, this case uh, involves looking at the nearly 500 students and several hundreds of uh, student variables. So using a uh, visitor, uh, a teacher can now see how a change in, teaching in their teaching method uh, impacts students' uh, learning. So uh, for example, how does providing a uh, Java code example on the MOOC uh, platform uh, affect students' programming skills? And we use uh, Visper to uh, see this, uh, 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 to differentiate different confounding factors. And we uh, use a control uh, user experiment to evaluate uh, the effectiveness and utility of uh, VSPR. And uh, we design a within subject uh, study uh, ev to evaluate participants' ability to make causal reasoning uh, in different tasks. So uh, the result shows that uh, participants uh, obtain uh, higher accuracy and were more confident in their uh, answers. Um, especially in making more difficult causal decisions. All right, so in summary, uh, this work uh, deals with causal interpretation. Uh, we study how human AI collaboration can better identify uh, and uh, uh, understand various association uh, such as uh, Simpson's paradox. And uh, we develop a uh, whisper um, um, to uh, that is based on a deep paradox workflow idea. And it addressed the uh, confounding bias and uh, the subgroup heterogeneity in data summary statistic. 
So the evaluation shows that visible uh, enhanced awareness and understanding of spirits association, and it can help uh, data practitioners in making uh, informed uh, decisions. All right. So uh, some of the text way uh, from the studies. So uh, first, I would like to convey that um, today's AI uh, tend to make artificial correlations, which makes it dangerous to uh, for, for us to fully rely on AI to make decisions. So uh, we need uh, less uh, black box solutions, but more uh, clear box uh, resolutions. And here solution refers to a direct answer uh, to solve a problem, while resolution refers to a process of resolving a decision. And uh, I would argue that um, until AI understand the world as human do, human have a better ability to weigh information in context. And uh, until AI becomes blind spot free, uh, more human interpretable uh, clear box in the decision process is needed. And you can see I show two uh, exclamation marks. Um, these, uh, I want to put them here uh, to, uh, so we need to be uh, super uh, cautious about the conditions, about these two conditions. So the first one uh, not only requires AI to have common sense, but also requires it to understand different individuals' uh, common sense, and not only the most common common sense, which is challenging even for human. And the second uh, mark is a philosophical question. So can AI be completely free from the blind spots? So if AI can catch these spots, they won't be called blind spots. So we have to be uh, skeptical until uh, the day comes. And the second takeaway uh, is something that is untold. So when I break down uh, the uncertainty, I only mentioned two major types, uh, the um, electoric uncertainty and epistemic uncertainty. Uh, this is for the sake of uh, simplicity and the most uh, relevant to today's uh, talks. But there is a more uh, critical one, the ontological uh, uncertainty. So we need to ask other categories like female versus male, black versus white, left versus right. Uh, are these categories even meaningful or valid? And are they meaningful across cultures and uh, societies? And the data appear to show categorical patterns um, uh, may be there, but as a knowledge system, are we making useful upstream assumptions about the categories or ontology uh, when we create this system? So uh, I believe this is a fundamental question that uh, every uh, AI researcher must uh, consider. So uh, with that, uh, I want to thank you for your listening and happy to take any question at this point. All right, uh, thanks, Yuru. Um, we have a couple of questions in the chat. I'll read those to you first and then we'll open up the floor. So the first one is from Emilio, uh, it says, Hi, Yuru, Emilio here. Uh, quick question, what's the advantage of knowing when a machine makes a mistake with high confidence? One could think that mistake is a mistake and they are all equally important to address whether or not the wrong prediction was made with high or low confidence. What do you think? Oh, uh, that is called unknown, unknown. And it's important because it's a systematic. Uh, it, machine will repeat the error over and over. So as I break down with the uh, uh, the the uh, arrows into uh, different uh, types of error due to the uncertainty, the 
uh, aleatoric is irreducible. So if the, the, that, that is not systematic and uh, irreducible error, those errors are these kind of errors that not related to what machine don't know. Don't know. But if it's uh, epistemic errors, machine will make the same error over and over again. So this is why those errors are more concerning. All right, uh, another question also from Emilio. Uh, second question, humans have blind spots and it's fair to hope that AI one day will not have such blind spots. However, do you think that we should hold AI to a higher standard than we currently apply to humans? If AI has comparable blind spots to humans, is that enough for today for deploying it? Thanks. Uh, it's it, it's a great question. So human also have a uh, blind spots. That's why I, I uh, we promote the AI uh, 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 AI human collaboration. And not only what from one uh, human, but also human that understand the context where the decision making has to be uh, met and the context where the problem uh, is situated. All right, thank you. Uh, and then the last one is from Roshan Rain. Uh, he says, thank you for sharing your amazing work. I have two questions. How flexible is VSPR? Can other researchers add new metrics of confounding scores or new visualization methods for subground detection easily? And two, is it agnostic to the deep learning architecture used or prediction type classification or regression? Oh, yes. Uh, the second question, the answer is yes, it's agnostic to any kind of uh, uh, methods used for, for the visible because we use, like it's like a post hoc. Uh, causal reasoning uh, system. And uh, we, uh, so far it's uh, more like a prototype, but, but we uh, were thinking to design it so that we can add more uh, uh, reasoning uh, tools as a plugin. All right. And then next I saw Christina had her hand up. I'll call on her for a question. Um, yeah, my, these are great uh, philosophical, great questions from a philosophical point of view. I was had the more technical question because you know, as as you have done, I'm really happy to see working Simpson's paradox. You know, I've, I've worked very very similar areas, and one of the problems we um, bumped into was it's fairly straightforward if, if to disaggregate on the features you have measured, observable features. But moving from that to causal analysis, there could still be latent confounders. There could be some features you never measured, so you cannot disaggregate that on that. So what do you do about those things? Yeah, that's a great question. And in fact, this work is inspired by your earlier work. Uh, in right, thank you so much. Paradox, we, I, I love that work. That's why uh, we start working on, uh, kind of inspire us to work on these areas. So uh, yes, I think you are absolutely, absolutely right. The uh, AI and machine, what they can do is based on observatory, uh, observational data. So for, uh, from observational data, uh, we can help identify they are a uh, causal uh, uh, heterogeneous group. So that's one of the tools we provide in this. So if they are uh, significantly different cause and uh, um, outcome trend, we can identify them and then grouping them together. So this is one of the novelty we have in this. But of course, this is assuming that all the uh, variables are observed. And this is an important uh, assumption in almost all observational causal inference. However, because of this tool is uh, like a, a human AI collaboration. So we can make some um, hypothesis that there could be certain uh, unseen observations, certain variables. So that it can be done uh, in this uh, human AI uh, collaboration. So what machine can do is based on well, anything that is observable, but human can make a hypothesis into the system and they can see the differences when they have these uh, hypotheses. All right, thank you, right. thank you. Uh, we'll take one, one last quick question from the chat. Um, Adam Russell asks, uh, humans vary tremendously in terms of their own epistemic capabilities. 
can we use this work to improve our understanding of our own human abilities to think better in some way? Yeah, of course, yeah, of course. So that's why I, uh, I mean, my group always uh, uh, promote this uh, clear box uh, resolution, uh, which we we don't want to make uh, things done to be done. We want to kind of educate data practitioners how to reason about these uh, uh, these different phenomena. These. Uh, 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 Con confounding uh, effects and uh, kind of uh, very very complex uh, ph statistical phenomena. But actually, if you find an intuitive intuitive way to show the phenomena, uh, we hope that more data practitioner will be uh, would uh, be familiar with uh, this and have the right knowledge to understand their data and the tools better. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Yuru. Uh, I think we're at time. Um, appreciate the excellent talk and uh, look forward to the one-on-ones in the afternoon. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.